Hey, we pulling? Hey, I'm Zex, and here's our guide to Bastion of Twilight on normal. Thank you to all our supporters on Patreon for making these guides possible. They get early access to our guides and access to our supporter channel in Discord, so if you're interested in that, check out the links below. The first boss of the raid is Halfus Wormbreaker. There are five friendly drakes around his room, and a random three of them are awake each week. The boss gains different mechanics depending on which ones are awake, and releasing each drake gives a debuff to the boss that kinda counteracts each of those mechanics, but releasing them also makes the drakes enemies and you have to fight them with the boss. So on pull, have the off tank and range DPS release all three drakes at the same time, and gather them up and stack them with the boss to cleave them all down. The drakes don't actually do anything but melee, so they're pretty chill. If the Slate Dragon is active, the tanks need to taunt swap on the boss every once in a while when their Malevolent Strikes debuff gets too high. If the Storm Rider is active, you need to interrupt the boss's Shadow Nova cast, or else the raid takes big damn and gets knocked back. And if the Time Warden is active, stay a little spread out and dodge the Fireball Barrage coming from the boss's pet that's flying off the side of the platform to prevent some extra damage. The other two drake mechanics are passive things you won't even really notice. We recommend focusing down two of the drakes and then switching all your damage onto the boss because he gets a massive damage taken increase for each drake that dies and he just melts when he has two stacks. When the boss gets to 50% health, he starts using a new ability, Furious Roar, which does big raid-wide damage and stuns the raid for 6 seconds. Just try to keep everyone at full health and blast the boss to get through this last 50% safe. And that's pretty much it. Here's a recap of the fight, and we're on to the next boss, Theralion and Valiona. There's two bosses, but you only fight one at a time, and they share health. And there's two alternating phases. In phase one, you fight Valiona, while the other one flies around. Pull her down toward the middle of the room so everything's easier to see. Stay a little spread out, because the flying dragon shoots shadow bolts at random players that do splash damage. But when a random player gets the blackout debuff, several people should stack up, and the debuffed player should move on top of them and get dispelled quickly, because the debuff does AoE split damage when it's removed moved, and then everyone should spread back out again. Dodge the huge random breath from Valiona, Devouring Flames. You can also just run further away from the boss to take less damage from the breath if you're in a tough spot. And dodge these big swirlies on the ground, or else you get sent to another realm where you have to find a portal to get back without running into any of the orbs in there. After those swirlies are over, the bosses switch places and you fight the Rallion while the other one flies around. Stay a little spread out, because the boss puts this pool under a random player that does dot damage, and when a random player gets the engulfing magic debuff, they need to be at least 10 yards away from everyone, because the debuff makes them do double damage and healing, but also makes them pulse all the damage they do around themselves. When a random player gets this purple mark on their head, a few players need to stack on them to split the damage from the twilight meteorite that's about to hit them. And finally, about 3 minutes into the fight, the flying dragon starts doing these deep breaths across the room. So everyone needs to find the flying dragon and move out of the part of the room she's about to breathe down. Otherwise, if you touch the fire that's left behind from the breath, you get sent down to that other realm and you have to find your way back out. After the breaths are over, the bosses switch places again and it's back to phase 1. And that's pretty much it. Here's a recap of the fight and we're on to the next boss, the Ascendant Council. This boss has three phases, and they all have a ton of mechanics, so here we go. In phase one, you fight two bosses, Faludius and Ignatius, and they don't share health. The tanks should keep the bosses apart from each other, with Ignatius faced away from the raid because of his frontal flame torrent. All melee DPS should be on Ignatius, and all ranged on Faludius, because his Glaciate cast does an insane amount of damage if you're close to him. Even the tank should move a little bit away from the boss when it's being cast. Interrupt the Hydro Lance cast from Faludius as often as possible, or else it does massive damage to a random player. If you get the Waterlogged debuff, run into the fire on the ground real quick to remove it before the next Glaciate cast, or else you get stunned for a long time. Everyone switch to hitting Ignatius when he puts a shield on himself and starts channeling Rising Flames. Interrupt the channel once the shield is broken or else it's raid wide damage gets way too crazy and then the range go back to Faludius. If you get the Heart of Ice debuff, run to the melee and then get dispelled because it gives them a buff that makes them do more damage to Ignatius. Likewise, if you get the Burning Blood debuff, run to the ranged and get dispelled because it gives a buff that makes them do more to Faludius. This phase ends when one of the bosses gets to 25% but try to get them to 25% at the same time because it'll make phase 3 a little easier later on. If you have way more melee or ranged DPS, you might have to swap on the fly to make this happen. In phase 2, the first two bosses swap out with another two bosses, Arion and Tarastra. The tanks can keep these bosses stacked for cleave, and melee should be on Tarastra while ranged are on Arion, because Arion likes to teleport around sometimes. His lightning blast cast also needs to be interrupted right after he teleports, so range need to be ready for that. Shortly after this phase starts, everyone needs to run into one of these tornadoes around the room to get a debuff that makes you immune to the big raid-wide cast Quake, which comes from Tarastra eventually. Likewise, after Quake happens, 
happens, everyone needs to run into one of these wind vortex things on the ground to get a debuff that makes you immune to Arion's big raid wide cast Thundershock, and then run into a tornado again after Thundershock and repeat. If you get a yellow mark on your head from the lightning rod debuff, run at least 15 yards away from other players until it's gone to prevent damage from chaining to other players. Interrupt Tarastra's hardened skin cast or else you need to break his shield to do much damage to him. And melee need to stay out of the dust on the ground around Tarastra to prevent some extra damage. Try to get these bosses to 25% at the same time as well and then we're on to phase 3. Everyone gets stunned for a little bit and all four bosses converge into one big boss that gets all their remaining health combined, which is why you want them all as low as possible. The tank needs to constantly move the boss around the room because he drops pools at his feet that grow if he's standing in them. The range need to spread out a bit because he constantly spams chain lightnings at the raid. This damage ramps up really quick, so save bloodlust and cooldowns for this phase to get through it as fast as possible. Focus heals into the random players that get picked up by the gravity crush debuff and dodge the little flares on the ground because they explode in a small circle after a second. And that's pretty much it. Here's a recap of the fight and we're on to the last boss, Cho Gaul. This boss has two phases. When you pull the boss, you get this weird looking resource bar that shows you how much corruption you have. You get corruption by taking damage from avoidable mechanics, and the more corruption you have, the more bad things start happening to you. At 25 corruption, you need to get a corruption debuff dispelled off you. At 50, you need to spread from your allies to avoid giving corruption to them. At 75, you do unavoidable damage to the raid. And at 100, you can't be healed anymore, but you do get a double damage buff until you die. So that's kind of cool. Long story short, corruption bad, so don't stand and stuff. In phase 1, face the boss away from the raid and everyone stack up behind the boss. When a few players get mind controlled, everyone needs to use interrupts and CCs on them to break them out of the mind control. Almost any CC works as long as it stops their channel. When a big ad spawns on one side of the room, the off tank needs to get aggro on it and take it away from the boss, and range DPS switch to it and kill it. Its depravity cast also needs to be interrupted, and everyone needs to dodge the swirlies it puts on the ground. When the boss casts fester blood, some little ads spawn from where the big ad was killed, and the range DPS need to slow and kill them to prevent them from reaching their fixated targets and giving them corruption. The tanks need to taunt swap on the boss every once in a while to let the fury of Cho Gaul debuff expire whenever there isn't a big ad to tank, and they should move the boss out of the random fire that spawns on the ground around him. When the boss gets to 25% health, he starts phase 2. In this phase, all you have to do is pull the boss to a wall and interrupt and kill the tentacle adds that spawn around him to prevent them from giving corruption to everybody. Pulling him to a wall makes the tentacles spawn closer together so they're easier to cleave down. The boss just pulses ramping raid wide damage the whole phase, so we recommend using bloodlust here and finishing the boss quick. And that's pretty much it. Here's a recap of the fight. Thank you again to our supporters on Patreon for making these videos possible. If you have any questions or need any help with the bosses, join our discord with the link below. See you next time.